In this video, we describe how to work with ESP devices, ESP8266. You can see it in our case, it's not MCU. And ESP32. Also, several devices we mounted in our board. You can see DHT, buzzer, button, LED, and LCD display. <coughs> so let's check code. ESP lets you work without Tesla SCAD at runtime, so you can set, set up the cards without runtime version. So initialize Tesla Cloud H, initialize SSID password, and Tesla Cloud like cloud client with your account's credentials and number of device, one in our case. Now we set up sale monitor and connect to our Wi-Fi net network. And set up tag. Like in previous video we discussed Arduino Uno, we set up analog tag with scale and dead band. And also in ESP devices, we can set up the cloud. That means the card for uh, our cloud solution. It's analog in text settings cloud tab. So you can set up unit, image, description, minimum, many, maximum value. So you can do it in the sketch. Not only by using Tesla SCADA to ID. You can see how can we do it. Color we can set up by using color range structure. And at the end we add tag and our tag cloud settings to our cloud client. And in the loop we run cloud cloud client run for possibility to get inputs and provide it to the cloud. But it's not very convenient to set up it by using Sketch. For more possibilities, we provide web settings. To do this, include web settings in your Sketch. Also, it's optional to you can you have to include little FS because if you want to work with files, I explain you how to do it later. Web settings we bind to our cloud client. Cloud client connect, web settings in it in the setup, and in the loop we should web settings sticks and cloud client run. Now, after uploading this project on your ESP device, you can have access to access point ESP web config. Connect to this access point. And choose address with 1 1 at the end of your local now let's enter password of your Wi-Fi network and your accounts for Tesla Cloud and save these settings. The ASP device restarted in this case. And you can access to the address by using address that give you your router. In my case, this address is 1 and 3 at the end of my local net network. Let's connect to our device. Of course, you should connect, you have to connect to your Wi Fi router. And you can see your connection settings your username, password, device number, and you have to set up your time zone for your text information. Now let's get to, to, to for certain text. First, you have to choose text you want to select. In our case, we select tag one, and 
set up its settings number of the pin, mode, input pull-up. Also, you can set up tech card for the cloud. It's the same settings like you can do in the sketch we did in previous manually or in Tesla SCADA ID. Also, this option is set by using web settings interface. So, the next tag is analog tag, with analog tag, and you can set up scale, but in this case you have to set up scale by what value will be multiply your bits. And set up LED, the, the same settings, so in our case it's output, pin number 13, and digital. Next tag is humidity. It's a virtual tag. It's not bind to the pin, so you have to, in our case, it's sensor, DHT sensor provides this information, and temperature also. So, we set up history information for this tag. The history information will be saved in files. I will be show it a bit later how to do this. And that's all. You have to save after settings, tag settings, and after save it's restarted and all your settings will be run. I will show you sketch with all settings, with all tags that we use. In our case we need to include liquid crystal for LCD and DHT, and set up LCD and DHT like it should be done. It's described in many other tutorials, so I didn't stop in it. And in cloud client run, when in the loop, we call DHT handler, in our case, the function that will be run every request period, so it's read humidity and temperature, and write this value to the text with name humidity and temperature. It should be the same name that we bind it, that we use it in web settings. So, for temperature, it should be temperature, for humidity, humidity. So, it should be exactly the same name for its working. And write value that we read from the DHT sensor to the, this text. And to write in the LCD, you have to get information from LCD text. So, you read from the cloud LCD information and write it into the liquid crystal LCD device. So, let's start cloud Tesla SCADA. You can see all our values, it's also from ESP32, but we need only from ESP8. So you can see LED is working, button we push, it's working, temperature is showing, and we, when we write LCD, it will be written to LCD display, on LCD display. Buzzer is working. It's possible to work with files in web settings. You can upload screens, use for story history information, and for debug files. To do this, you have to include little 4s or snips. In, in our case, I use little 4s. And in this case, this tab will be really period. First, you can use it for uploading screens. And to do, to do this, you have to open Tesla SCADA ID and in script tabs, click right button and choose export screen for cloud. Save this information, save this name, save the screen, and you can upload it by using this button and upload this file. File zip is appear and you can use it in your project without and upload screens without Tesla SCADA to runtime. 
also in to do the, also if, for, to do this you have to enable screen file and set up main screen this screen will be uploaded first in our case it's modbus screen also as I, as I told you above you can use set, set up, uh, store here debug files and history information in our case we save history information for analog tech, humidity tech and for temperature tech now let's see let's choose screens tab on the web interface and you can see it's uploaded from not from our tesla scada runtime it's off but from the our device and you can use the screen in the same way like we did it when it uploaded from tesla scada to runtime turn on leds turn on buzzer get temperature and history and humidity information get analog information from our potentiometer and other things also in the files as, as I told above we hold history information you can get it by clicking button in temperature card as you can see information is uploaded but it's uploaded not from our PC it's uploaded from device but this mistake it's temperature sensor is have some problems so because it's not big so value it's not big so temperature in my room but when you upload it from the from the long period it takes time so during this time period you can get information from the devices so I think in the future versions we have possibility to up to store his information in the cloud databases so let's check also from the voltage it, as, I, as you can see just one hour period time period information uploaded several seconds it's not very good so I think we'll change it in the next versions also you can see settings for our other device ASP32 as you can see it's also text settings in this device so you can see virtual information whole sensor you make preliminary settings to get this information you can find it in other tutorials I didn't stop it as in the pre for ESP 8266 you have to write information by user exactly the same name that you made in settings so whole sensor should be the same name have in sketch also it's possible to store in whole sensor in temperature 2 information in ESP files you, it's also store screens but we didn't use it like you see we disabled it but whole sense information it's uploaded long time because it's changed very quickly and store more information so it's not very useful as you can see text settings the same made it in the same way like we did for ESP8266 and also it's possible to get debug information from our ESP device in our case you can see only requests and responses from cloud you can make some useful information by using set debug message in the sketch that's all if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask by using email or in our forum